And as we flew in towards the target, they're throwing up a barrage of AAA, anti-aircraft artillery, exploding shells. In the green, green, hazy night sky, and of light streaming up into the night sky, and of sparkles. It looks benign and safe. It looks perhaps a little bit like Christmas tree lights, but they're not sparkling lights. They're tubes of molten explosive metal, and if one of those tubes of metal hits you, there's a damn good chance that you won't come home. The only thing that you can do is fly as low and as fast as you've ever flown before. We're flying the aircraft at about 15 feet. That's lower than the ceiling of the room that you're sitting in this afternoon. We're flying the aircraft at 650, 700 miles an hour. That's like going from one side of the M25 to the other in about 15 or 20 seconds. At that height. And as you fly in towards the target, you're scared, but you're still supremely in control. We're running from the target area. At 700 miles an hour, you're in and out. It all happens in two or three seconds. You're out of the target area. You're on your way home. You think that you're safe. Suddenly, there's a crash. A heat-seeking surface-to-air missile hits the back of the aircraft. It's like being hit by an express train. At one minute, I was flying along at 15 feet, looking up at bright blue sky. The aircraft explodes as it's hit by a supersonic missile. It's tumbling like a sycamore leaf. I'm still flying, but now I'm flying sideways. I'm still looking up, but now I'm looking up at brown sand. At least I presume it was the sand that was brown at that particular moment. <laughs> this is unbelievable! The circumstances now are almost too great to cope with. You almost want to do nothing. You want to sit down. You want to do nothing. Let the circumstances, let the challenges wash over you. Let somebody else take the decision. But you can't do that. You can't do that when you've still got one iota of self-control left. You've got to do something, and it's only you.